Hey Pippi fam, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me again. If this is your first time here, do make sure you hit the red subscribe button below and click the bell icon so you're notified each time I put out a new video. Today I want to talk to you about the brown headed parrot. Have you heard of one of these before? I'm willing to bet you've never heard of them before unless of course you've been watching my channel. They're not very popular at all, at least in North America but they make really, really, really nice pets. I'm here to tell you a little bit about them. Actually, no, not a little bit. I'm here to tell you a lot about them. And let's get started. Mm, what's that? Yummy. Brown-headed parrots are native to Africa. They are a medium-sized parrot, as you can see, and they're part of the genus Poicephalus. Now, the Poicephalus genus has 10 different species. I'm not gonna go into all of them, but brown heads are one of them. The other common species that you'll see in this genus in North America are the Senegal parrot. Those are quite common. You'll also see the Myers parrot. You'll see the red belly parrot and you'll see the Cape parrot. So of course, we're not gonna be focusing on any of those. However, when compared against the Senegal, the Myers and the red belly parrot, you'll find that the brown headed parrot is a little bit larger and a little bit stockier. Now, what are they like as pets? Okay, I may be a little bit biased, but honestly, the people that I know that have brown headed parrots all love them. Brown headed parrots are amazing pets. This is mine, her name is Keely. I've had her for nine years. She is hands down, like by far, the most even tempered, even keeled, well rounded parrot I've ever owned. They are extremely well tempered. Now, I'm going to clause that by saying that every parrot has their bad days. Parrots are parrots. These are not dogs we're talking about here. So every parrot has their day. However, when compared against other species, like these guys are amazing. They can make a really good pet. If you already have some parrot experience, maybe you've had a budgie or a cockatiel, maybe a love bird before, and you're looking to get something a little bit bigger, you may consider a brown headed parrot just simply because it's not like having a little parrot, but they're not like having a big parrot. So their personality is quite well-rounded, as I've mentioned. They can be very affectionate, very cuddly, but they're not total Klingons like, let's say, a, a Conyer, a Green Chi Conyer, or a Sun Conyer. They're not going to drive you nuts because they never want to get off your shoulder. They can be very independent as well, and that's a fantastic thing for someone like me. I'm pretty chill, laid back. I like independent parrots. So she can absolutely play on her own, but she also has that great mix where she wants to be with me. And these guys also, they're not overly sensitive. So if you've seen my previous video on Pionis, and if you haven't seen it yet, at the end of this video, you're welcome to go have a look. I'm gonna link it up here or, or here, I always get this mixed up, and I'm gonna put it in the show notes. Either way, Pionis make great pets too, but they tend to be a little bit more sensitive in nature. They're very similar to African greys in that way. Brown-headed parrots are not like that. Now, again, every parrot is unique, so you need to interact with them based on an understanding of them as an individual. But overall, they have a very good mix of self-confidence with an easygoing nature, and that makes them not overly sensitive to changes in their environment, whether that be a, a new cage or a new person in their environment or taking them out to go visit. Of course, this is providing that they're well socialized to begin with, but overall, they can be on the more forgiving side uh, when, when you're thinking about parrots in general. Again, you have to deal with them as a parrot. This is not a dog. You need to Oh, did you see that? She just flipped all that apple up on me. Thanks. <laughs> you have to deal with them as if they're a parrot, understand their needs, but generally they're not sensitive like some of the other parrots that you may own. They are not generally prone to plucking, which is great. Of course, you have to treat them well, but they're not prone to plucking. And like I mentioned, they do have a very independent side to them. They can be active. 
So particularly when they're young, and this is true of most parrots, when they're young, they can be very active. But as they get older, once they pass puberty, they tend to kind of even out and they're pretty good that way. So Keely, she's got that, you know, that, excuse me, she's crawled onto my lap again. Keely, come. Uh, filming with animals. <laughs> A million takes later. Okay, so Keely, go on my shoulder, honey. We'll see if she stays. What was I saying? Oh yeah, she's not too active. She's active today. Generally, she'll just stay on my shoulder. She's used to me sitting in this room and she sits on my lap. So she's like, why are you not letting me sit on your lap like normal? <laughs> they make great pets because they have a fantastic temperament. I would definitely recommend them. What if I live in an apartment? Can they make a good apartment bird? Yes, they can. Now, again, take that with a grain of salt because it depends on the bird. They are generally a quieter species of parrot, but again, individuals within a species, some can be ridiculously loud and some can be, you know, like you don't even know they're alive because they never make any noise. Now, Keely, she hardly ever ever vocalizes like i could go an entire week and never hear her vocalize other than maybe saying up up because she wants me to pick her up but other than that she doesn't make any noise she also vocalizes the least out of all of my parrots so when she vocalizes she might do it for maybe five seconds once a week twice a, once every two weeks and that's it now, what does it sound like? You probably may have heard it earlier, if I didn't edit that part out by the time you're watching this. They have a very high pitched type of screech. So it kind of beep, it's very piercing. So while they don't vocalize that often, when they do vocalize, everybody can hear it. And if you end up with one that likes to vocalize repeatedly, then you know that could be getting on some people's nerves so you know uh, do with that what you will um, they may not make the best pets in an apartment but overall they make better parrot pets for an, an apartment environment can brown-headed parrots speak yes they can however almost any parrot can speak given the right situation and just depending on the bird. So never get a parrot, as I've mentioned before, never get a parrot just because you want it to talk. Okay, that's Keely's scream, okay? That's as loud as it gets. So never get a parrot just because you want it to speak because it may never speak. Even if you got a male, which males in the parrot kingdom tend to speak a little bit more readily, doesn't mean they're gonna speak. So. I would not recommend this species if you're looking for a bird that talks. Does she talk? She does. She says a few words and she imitates sounds so she can imitate me gulping water, <laughs> opening uh, my supplement bottles, the sound of the, you know, something coming out of the supplement bottle. It's really cute. But overall, she's not really a talker. Okay, so don't buy them if you want them, want a parrot that talks because this is not the bird for you. How long do these guys live for? Okay, they can live between 25 to 40 years. Uh, again, it depends on the constitution of the bird, how healthy they are to begin with, how well you take care of them. It really depends, generally 25 to 40 years. I don't personally know any Poicephalus that have reached 40 years, but that doesn't mean that they don't. The oldest Poicephalus I know, and I'm talking about a Senegal Myers red belly, um, is 30. Uh, and so, of course, we haven't, again, with certain some species of parrots, we just haven't been keeping them long enough as pets in North America, so we don't really have a good understanding of what the absolute average usually looks like. So that's the approximate that you can expect if you own one of these parrots. Are they dusty? Well, let's bring Keely back out and ask her ourselves. Keely, hi, what are you doing? Up, up. Keely, are you dusty? Do you make a lot of dust? Keely does not make any dust, okay? Other than, obviously, when a parrot is molting and they're getting their new feathers in, just like she is, you know, she's in the pros, she's been losing feathers right, left, and center. When they get the new feathers in, as you know, there's like a, a feather casing, the white, stiff piece on the feather. 
when they break those casings open, you're going to see dander on the floor. But other than that, she they are not um, a, a feather dust producing parrot like a cockatoo or an African grey. But even still, there's some birds that like parrotlets. I find parrotlets to be very dusty. She's not dusty at all, which is fantastic. You may be wondering, should I get a male or should I get a female? You know what? With this species, it doesn't really make a difference. So in general, males tend to get hit harder with hormones when they go through puberty and when it's springtime or mating season, a little bit harder than females. Hi. Could you hear her? She just said hi. She doesn't really like this camera. She's trying to walk away from it. Um, males tend to get hit harder with hormones, but and females generally tend to be a little bit more easygoing. So that general rule applies to brown heads as well. But honestly, you can't go wrong with a male or a female. I prefer hens overall in any species, with the exception of an eclectus. I prefer hens, but that's just my personal preference. Either will work just fine for you. And that brings me to the second piece about socialization. So regardless of the gender that you have, it's your job as a pet owner to plan ahead and be diligent in carrying out socializing your parrot. It's just like when you get a puppy, you have to expose them to as many new things as possible so that they get used to it, so that they react well and in an even tempered manner in different situations especially in unexpected situations. So it's no different with a parrot. You need to socialize them. It's really important to socialize them when they're babies, when they're young adults, and when they're going through puberty and beyond. So the key is consistency. The key is training them according to an understanding of parrot psychology, and also exposing them to as many safe different experiences as possible. Go out, expose them to different people. Have different people that know what they're doing. Hold them. Go to different places with your parrot. Expose them to different toys, different types of food. Food cut different ways. You have to expose them to everything. I was really diligent with that with Keely and I'm really happy that you know I got really good results because of it. So excuse me, let me retrieve my bird once again. Good girl. Okay. She can do tricks. You want to see? Keely, you want to do upside down? Come on. Ready? Upside down. Good girl. Let go. Good bird. Yeah, good bird. That's a good girl. If you've seen my previous Pionis videos, you know that I've said Pionis can tend to have their own unique smell. Do brown-headed parrots have their own unique smell? Well, anything, if you don't bathe it regularly enough, most likely will have its own unique smell. However, in general, no, they don't They don't smell, nothing. Like, Keely, do you smell? No, she doesn't have a smell. It's, it's nothing noticeable. So in case you ever wondered, well, now you know. What type of food do I feed her? Well, just like my other videos, I'm not gonna get into a huge amount of detail, but with like with any parrot, they need a varied diet. You cannot feed a parrot a seed-only diet. That is extraordinarily unhealthy for them they will die on that diet. I feed Keely a mixed diet. She is on a pelleted diet. I feed her Harrison's, their organic pellet brand, a blend, and I feed her fresh vegetables and a little bit of fresh fruit every single day. I also give her some seeds, some nuts daily, but not very much. What size case should I put one of these guys in? I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about this either. All I'm going to say right now is make sure you get the biggest cage you can afford and the biggest cage your space will allow. As you can see, brown heads can be active and so you don't want them getting bored in their cage during the times when you can't be entertaining them or chilling out with them. So do get a large cage so they can move around and don't forget, you, the cage may look big, but once you get it home, you put it together, you put the, the, the perches in, you put the toys in, that cage is not going to be very big. There's not gonna be a lot of space in there for your bird to move around comfortably. So take that into consideration when you're buying your cage. Can I give my bath, can I give my bath a bird? Can I give my bird a bath? Yes, you can. So there's two different ways you can do it. 
Actually, there's three. You can offer a brown-headed parrot a large shallow dish of water. I don't tend to do that just because they're bigger birds and it makes a bigger mess. So most people like to either take a clean spritz bottle and spritz them with lukewarm water. You can do that once daily or my preferred choice is I actually take her in the shower and put her when she's comfortable put her under the actual shower so your bird may or may not like that a lot of times it's all about the socialization but there's different ways you can keep these guys clean make sure you're giving them baths regularly though they need it just like any other parrot how about exposure to sunlight? Do they need that? Yes, they do. They need the UV light that comes from being outdoors. Now, in the summer, that may not always be an option. And if you are gonna put them outside in the summer, if it's warm enough in your area, make sure they have enough shade, make sure they have enough water, and just make sure it's not too hot. So you don't want them getting heat stroke because okay? they can get that even if they come from a part of the world that's warm it doesn't necessarily mean they're not going to get heat stroke so you really need to keep an eye on them but there's all other options where you can get uv lighting in the home and it can replicate the sunlight of course do your research because some uv bulbs do not provide the spectrum uh, of uv light that's required to keep them healthy how about training them can these guys do tricks yeah, they can do tricks. They've got a really good temperament for it. You can see how active Keely was. She was actually kind of active right now because she had to do a poop and she didn't want to poop on me. <laughs> so they can do tricks. They have the temperament for it. They've got a good attention span, generally. And oh, now she wants to get down again. They have a good attention span. They have the confidence to do it. They have the intelligence and they also have that well-rounded personality. So you can absolutely teach them tricks. One thing that I really recommend with any parrot that you get, and of course it's easier when you start young, is to harness train them. So Keely is absolutely harness trained and it really makes it so much easier. I can easily get her in the harness and I can easily just take her wherever I go. So if I'm going to an outing, I just pop her in the harness and away we go, just like a dog. <laughs> If I'm taking her to an expo, et cetera, et cetera, over to my family's house, over to my friend's house, it's great sitting out in the back, having a barbecue, bird on the shoulder, or on a play stand and she's harnessed. It's a really nice feeling to know that you can take your bird freely. You don't have to cage them. Well, that's the brown headed parrot. I hope you found this video informative. If you liked it, make sure you give it a like below. And if you haven't already, click the red subscribe button below. Thank you so much for joining me again and be sure to be safe out there. We'll see you the next time. Bye for now. Wanna go upside down? Ready? Ready? Upside down. Let go. Good bird. Oh, good job. Nice. Well done. Ready? Okay. Good bird.